Hey guys, Matt here and welcome to the next episode of the Game Gengo Genki series, Lesson 7. In this video we're going to be having a look at some very important pieces of Japanese grammar such as teiru or teimasu. A little bit more information about how to describe things using adjectives. We learnt last lesson how to turn verbs into the te form and now we're going to be learning how to do that with adjectives and nouns. We're going to be checking out how to express to go somewhere to do a certain action with verb stem ni iku. And then finally we're going to have a little bit more of a look at how to use counters specifically here with people. So first up we have teiru or teimasu. Now this grammar point is a little bit confusingly explained in textbooks like the Genki textbook and many resources online, but this is actually a really straightforward piece of grammar. They say that you need to learn the actual classification of verbs. Now I think this is getting things off to a little bit more of a confusing start when you can actually make this so much more simple. Very simply, te iru is the verb in the te form followed by iru to exist to be. So you could almost look at it in a simplified way as that you're in the state of the verb that you said. You are eating, right? You're kind of in this state of eating, right? And that's kind of how you can look at it. Or for example, nomu, to drink. Nonde, nondeiru. Drinking. You're in the state of drinking. Simon wa, koko de kaze ni fukarete, beer de mo nonderu toki ga itchiban shiawase da na. Doesn't matter what classification the verb is. Tabeteiru, you're in the state of eat. Eating. Shindeiru, you're in the state of die. You're dead. So you could look at it in this very simple explanation that it's just the state of the verb, right? Is eating, is dead, is awake. Maybe you're reading a book. You could say, Yondeiru. Or perhaps you're doing something right now. Shteiru. Suru to do turns into shteiru. Doing in the state of do. Oi, what you doing? To be married. Family? Or now, in the Genki textbook, they describe this as a result of a change. You weren't married, you are married, and now you are married. It just, that's too complicated. It's very simply, you are in the state of being married. You are married. <laughs> that is the state you're in right now, right? If you're married, you are married. And so, kekkon shiteimasu. <laughs> Possessing or holding. Shitteiru. Knowing something. Being in the state of knowing. But this is the same thing even with some verbs like futoru, to be overweight. Well, futotteiru means you are overweight. You're in the state of being overweight. Same thing in reverse, yaseru to get thin, yaseteiru. You're in the state of being thin. Or oh, kiru to wear, like I'm wearing this great Game Gengo merch. <laughs> you could put that in the continuous form as well here with teiru. Kiru to wear, kiteiru. Wearing, in the state of wearing. Vegeta 
だからみんなの分も作って持ってきたのよ Another really useful verb that you've probably come across already Sumu to live Same thing 住んでいる Living この街のどこかにマスターライラスと呼ばれる人物が住んでいるはずじゃ Now, there are two verbs that you may be a little bit confused with when you try this, and that is iku to go and kuru to come. If you think in the kind of English mindset with the ing, you may get a little bit confused here. For example, itteiru. This is iku to go in the teiru form. Itteiru. What do you think that means? Do you think that means going, have gone, or will go? Itteiru. Well, the verb iku to go can both be going and it can also be you have gone. So let's say, for example, you're going to the shops. At any point in that journey, if someone's on the phone and they say, Where are you? and you're like, Oh, I'm going to the shops, you could use konbini ni itteiru. I'm going to the convenience store. Sonja! Saki ni itteru ze! But let's say that you are at the convenience store and someone asks your friend, hey, where's Matt? They could say, Matt's at the convenience store. He's gone to the convenience store. Well, here you could express this gone to the convenience store as well with itteiru, both going to and gone. And the same thing for kuru to come, kitteiru. Coming. Well, this could both express that someone is on their way to you, they're coming to where you are, but it could also be that they've already come and they're still there. Like, for example, someone is coming to your house. Ie ni kiteiru. They're coming to the house. But if someone's already at your house, you could say they've come to the house using kiteru as well. Yeah. So just be careful because there are a few verbs like iku to go and kuru to come that when in the te iru form can actually be used in more than one use. It doesn't have to be just presently right now. It can actually be both presently right now and that you've already done it. And this trips up a lot of beginner learners. So really try and think about it like being in the state of the verb. That can kind of help you visualize it a little bit clearer than saying it's ing. That's a, a little bit more confusing, I think, when you translate it to English directly. However, it does go a little bit deeper than that if you were actually to explore why some verbs are used in different situations. Like, for example, taberu, you can use to say that you are eating, but you could also say for like a habit, you eat regularly. Whereas verbs like shinu, to die, you can only use when you're saying you are dead. You cannot use shindeiru to express you are dying. For that, you need to use a completely different verb, shinikakeru. So what I'd like to do is just have a quick look at the three different uses for teiru, how this is actually used in Japanese. So according to a nice little textbook, Martin's Reference Grammar of Japanese, it describes there being three different uses of teiru, repetitive or habitual action. Actions. This is like something that you usually do. For example, I often drink coffee. Yoku, kohi o nondeiru. I'm often drinking coffee. Another use is continuative. That means you keep on doing that action. This is kind of like something you're doing right now. Like right now, I'm drinking coffee. Kohi o nondeiru. So it's not talking about my habits or anything, it's talking about right now. This is what I'm doing. And then the final use of teiru is talking about the results, kind of resultative. Like for example, omae wa mo shindeiru. 
you are already dead. So the resulting state is you are dead. Not dying, dead. So very simply, you can use teiru to talk about a verb that's happening right now. Tabeteiru, I'm eating. You can also use it to talk about something that's kind of in a result. Shindeiru, you are dead. Okiteiru, you are awake. Netteiru, you are asleep. And then finally, you can also use it to talk about habits or things that you do regularly. Like for example, I teach Japanese. You learn Japanese. This is a habit that we do regularly, right? It's not necessarily something we have to be doing right now. It's something that we just do as a habit. Well, you can use the teiru form to express this. Nihongo o oshieteimasu. I teach Japanese. Nihongo benkyo shiteimasu. You study Japanese. So while you may see in many different resources a very simple explanation that teiru is kind of like ing in Japanese, just be very careful as sometimes it's true. Sometimes you can have tabeteiru, eating, but sometimes you can't, shindeiru, you are dead. So just remember that teiru is used to either talk about a continuous action, something you doing right now, kind of like a state or a result, like you are dead, you are awake, or for some sort of habit, something you do regularly. I teach Japanese, you study Japanese. So as the teiru form is just a combination of a verb in the te form and then iru to exist, that means you can conjugate it in the exact same way that an iru verb is conjugated. That means if you wanted to say the negative, you aren't eating, or you are not dead, or you are not reading, all you have to do is just conjugate the idu verb into the negative form. That's it. Keep it in the te form, but just change this idu into inai or imasen. So maybe someone's not eating their breakfast, you could say, tabete imasen. Or maybe someone's not listening, you could say Kiteinai.スティルマンと一緒に技術者が降下したという話は本当なのか。いや、我々も聞いていない。シールテンの独自行動だ。俊介さん、私まだあなたに聞いていないことがあります。Or maybe, maybe someone's not dead, you could say Shindeimasen or Shindeinai. メリルは無事なのか? And the same thing with the past tense as well, was not. All you have to do is just put deshita at the end for polite forms, so imasen deshita. Or the past negative of iru, inai, tabete inakata. Soyeba, shibaraku tabete nakata. Now one last little thing is you see this a lot in casual Japanese and especially things like video games, anime and drama, and you've already seen a couple in this video already. The i in iru or imas can actually be dropped when put in the te form. This is kind of making it a little bit more of like a colloquial way of speaking, a more casual way. It's kind of like contracting it. So for example, instead of saying hanashite iru, Nani o gocha gocha hanashite iru? Sasta to koi! You could just say, Hanashiteru. This is a very casual, colloquial way of speaking, just dropping the E, contracting it together. Kiteiru, kiteru. Ne, kiteru? Oboeteiru, oboeteru. Omae. Beberu de atte wa, oboeteru? Just contract that E, so it's not so long. Oboeteiru, no, oboeteru just contract it. Now, a little bit more about how you can use adjectives to describe things. Let's say you have a friend and their hair is very, very long. You could say, Anata no kami wa nagai desu. Kono saki no michi wa nagai desu yo! Your hair is long. Literally, Anata no kami wa, as for your hair, nagai desu. It is long. So here, the focus on the sentence is talking about the hair, not the person. But you could shift that focus to the person by moving the wa particle 
Instead of anata no kami wa, as for your hair, you could just say anata wa, as for you, kami ga, your hair is what is, nagai desu. So there are two different ways that you can actually describe things here, depending on how you move around the particles. And this just changes the emphasis on what you're really focusing on. So your hair is long, anata no kami wa, nagai. Or you could say, as for you, you have long hair. Anata wa kami ga nagai desu. As for you, your hair is long. You have long hair. You are nagai da yo. You wa toukou ga taihen da kara yasumi ga nagai no sa. Now, this really is looking at the fundamental difference between the wa particle and the ga particle. Now, I don't want to overly confuse you at this stage, but if you would like to have a further look at how to use the wa and the ga particles, then check out my comparison of the wa and ga videos in the link down below. That will actually show you in a very concise, clear way of exactly the differences between these two particles. But the pieces of language that we're covering here is, for example, how to look at someone's features in their face. So you could say, me ga ouki. Your eyes are big. You have big eyes. Mimi ga chisai. You have small ears. The ears are small. Te ga ouki. So maybe you have very, very large hands, or maybe very small hands. Te ga chisai. Or maybe someone has very cute hair. Kami ga kawaii. Kawaii ってのは君みたいな子に使うべきだと思うけどな。え？まあ俺もこいつが可愛いってのは同感だけどね。So you'll see this ga particle used with adjectives all over the place to describe things like is tall, sega takai. だって忍者じゃんはもっと背が高いんだから。Is short, sega hikui. どうも日本人じゃないようです。多分中国人の背が低くて少しくたびれた感じの。Is smart, 頭がいい。頭がいいんですね。Okay, now we're on to the next piece of grammar. Now we have the te form of adjectives and nouns. So we already learned in the previous episode that you can put a verb in the te form to connect it to other actions, as we actually already just saw in te iru as well. Well, you can do the same thing with adjectives and nouns, but how do you put it into the te form? Well, for e adjectives, it's super simple. That final e in an e adjective, like oishi. Just that final e, drop that and put kute instead. So replace the e in an e adjective with kute, and that turns the e adjective into a te form. So now something can be big and delicious instead of just oki. It's big. You could say oki kute oishi. It's big and delicious. やはりこの木の下には球根が白く大きくて美味しそうだな。And the same thing can be done with na adjectives as well. All you have to do is just replace that na part with de. So, like for example, the na adjective genki, genki na hito, an energetic or lively person. 確かに明るくて元気な子ね。Well, maybe you want to describe them in a little bit more detail rather than just say they're genki. Maybe you want to say that they were very nice as well. Well, very simply, just put it in the te form. Just replace that na with de. Genki de yasashikata. He was energetic and nice. Saki no shounen. Rex ってい mas. とっても元気で優しい人です。So that de is connecting these two adjectives together, and the exactly same thing you can do with nouns as well. Maybe you want to add a little bit more detail about something like yourself. You could say, "Watashi wa kyoshi de, I'm a teacher and kyoshi de, I live in Japan, Nihon ni sundeimas." Think of it kind of like how the comma and and works in English. Shizuka de ochitsuku basho da ne, ii tenki da shi, kimochi ga ii yo. Next, we have a very useful piece of language to express that you're going somewhere for the express purpose of something. With verb stem ni iku. If you don't know what a verb stem is, all you have to do is put a verb in the mas form, like tabe mas. Drop the mas, and that's the verb stem tabe. So tabe ni iku. 
To go for the purposes of eating. To go to eat. Tabe ni iku. So, so nanda. Ah, datara, tabe de mo tabe ni iku. Or maybe you're going to the shops to buy something. Kai ni iku. Shinmai no host ga suits kai ni iku yona mise da. Kokyo brand nan ka oite ne ga. Maybe you had a friend come over to study. Benkyo shi ni kita. Hmm, wari. So, benkyo shimas, drop the mas, benkyo shi, and then ni kita, came to study. So, you can use this with a bunch of different verbs that describe movement, like iku to go, something ni iku, going for the express purpose of the thing, kai ni iku, to go to buy, kuru to come, benkyo shi ni kita to come to study. Okay, now finally we have how to use the counters for people. This is a little bit of a review as we've already covered most of this in a previous episode. So just very quickly, in Japanese, every kind of object, every thing has a different counter that you can attach to it. So instead of like in English where you can just say one, two, three, one person, two people, three people, in Japanese you need to use a counter after the number in order to specify that it is one person. And in Japanese, that counter is nin for people. So, easy, right? Just put one nin, and that should be right, right? Ichi nin. Bam bam. <laughs> Unfortunately, Japanese isn't quite that simple. Although it is that simple for most of the case, but some numbers, there are some exceptions you need to pay attention to. Good news though, in this situation with people, there's only two exceptions. Number one and number two. That's it. <laughs> so instead of ichi nin, it's hitori, one person. And instead of ni nin, <laughs> two people, no, no, it's just futari. So, hitori, futari. One person, two people. And luckily, every other number from 1 to 10 is just the number plus nin. San nin, three people. Yonin, four people. Yonin, five people. Roku nin, six people. Nana nin or shichi nin, seven people. Hachi nin, eight people. わたしたち so, luckily, it's only the first two numbers for people that you need to be careful of. Hitori, futari. That's the only exceptions. The rest, you can just put the number. Although, be careful about yon uh, for four. That is a little bit different. It's not yon nin, it's yonin. Just yo nin. And so now, if we put together some of the language that you've learned, you could say how many people there are in a room, or how many people are present. So, you could say, futari imasu. There are two people. Or Sanin imas. There are three people. Or maybe it's just you. <laughs> you could say Hitori imas. Or Hitori iru. Just one. Now you may be thinking, hey Matt, what about numbers beyond 10? And good news, it's very simple. You just put the number in front of nin and it should be okay. So, Juichi nin, Juni nin, Ju san nin. It keeps on going. Uh, you just add the number and then nin for people, and it's a okay. So, congratulations, guys. Yet another lesson finished. Congratulations, Oscar Sama. Uh, you've done a very good job. There was lots of information here. Hopefully, uh, some of the information was made a little bit more simply than the textbook is. Uh, I was really confused with the teiru when you learn it at the very beginning of your Japanese learning. It's kind of like, why is it so confusing? But good news, it's not. <laughs> it's just 
just the, the explanations are more confusing than they need to be. Very simply, te iru just means you're in the state of the verb. That's it. And it is actually iru, the verb to exist for animate objects. It is that verb, it's just connecting with the te form of another verb. You exist eating. You are eating, right? We had a little bit more look at how you can use adjectives to describe things with the ga and wa particle, how to create the te form of adjectives and nouns, very useful stuff. And we've learned how you can use verb stem ni iku to express going for the purpose of the verb. Kai ni iku, to go to buy something. Tabe ni iku, to go to eat something. And then finally, we had a bit of revision with counters for people. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much guys for watching. Hope you're enjoying learning Japanese. It's an absolute blast making these videos. Hope you guys enjoy. If you really like these videos, make sure to like, subscribe, tell your friends. And if you want to come support us on the Game Gengo Discord community, then feel free to come join us on the Game Gengo website, game-gengo.com. We have not only one of the best communities for helping you learn Japanese with very helpful, wonderful people just geeking out, enjoying video games and learning Japanese, a very non-judgmental environment, something I'm very, very proud of and I'll protect with my life. <laughs> uh, so amazing community, but not only that, but joining as different tier levels like a member or an elite, you get different bonuses. Like for example, you can vote on upcoming videos, you can get priority support on your Japanese questions with a native teacher, discounts on the merch store, even your own exclusive merch as well as you know your name and the videos and things like that for an executive producer tier so i hope you guys enjoy this channel hope you guys enjoy learning japanese thanks so much guys for watching and as always i'll see you all again in the next video see ya